Magandang araw, oras na para sa pinakabagong balita sa lagay ng panahon at sa mundo ng science and technology. Ako po si Jel Miranda and we welcome you to the OS TV, Science for the People. Kilalanin ang Field LiDAR 1 program na layong bumuo ng mga 3D flood and hazard maps para sa two-third ng Philippine River System at ito ay sa pamamagitan ng light detection and ranging o LiDAR. Tunghayan niya dito sa Sinesyensya. Ako si Miriam Santillan. Ako ang project leader ng CSU Lidar 1. Ang lidar ay light detection and ranging. Ito yung main technology, isa siyang modern technology na ginagamit to determine the elevation of an area. So kung gaano kataas or kababa yung isang area. So ang P-LIDAR 1 program ay isang proyekto na pinunduhan ng Department of Science and Technology. Ang main purpose, main objective of the P-LIDAR 1 program is to come up with flood hazard maps of the different river basins in the country. Flood hazard map, ginagamit siya ng mga local government units for disaster preparedness, specifically during flooding. So ito yung guide ng local government unit kung kailangan na ba nilang i-evacuate yung mga tao nila at kung saan lugar yung magiging affected. Ang pinaka main product ng LIDAR ay yung tinatawag natin na digital terrain model at saka digital surface model or DTM and DSM. And yung dalawang product na yun, yun yung main input to come up with a flood hazard map. So, nagsa-start tayo sa pag edit ng LiDAR data na pinu-forward sa amin ng taga UP Diliman. Dinivide namin yung team into three. Magsa-start tayo sa data processing team. Yung data processing team, ang pinaka-main output nila ay yung digital terrain model and digital surface model. DTM and DSM na yun, yun yung ginagamit ng flood modeling team. Bago nila i-forward yun sa flood modeling team, kailangan yung field survey team namin gumawa muna ng bathymetric survey. Kasi ang LiDAR technology, hindi niya kayang mag-penetrate sa water. So we need the FST to do the body survey of the river. After na ma-provide yun ng field survey team to the data processing team, kailangan nilang i-integrate. Pag may integrated na tayo na digital surface model, terrain model, ipo-forward na yun sa flood modeling team. Yung flood modeling team naman ngayon, sila na yung gagawa ng flood hazard map. Marami ng probinsya ang nakinabang ng, ng flood hazard map. Specifically for Caraga region, meron kasi ang project na to may 12 river basins kami na covered. Distributed to uh, sa apat na probinsya within Caraga. Agusan del Norte, Surigao del Norte, Surigao del Sur, and Dinagat Islands. Nagamit na yung mga hazard map namin specifically sa local government unit of Habonga. Ang Habongga po ay isa po siya sa mga munisipyo na nakapapalibot sa fourth largest lake of the Philippines, yung Kong Lake Mainit. Isa po siya sa yung nasa downstream siya. Siya yung lahat ng, ng tubig, siya yung nalalabasan. Isa lang kasi yung outlet ng, 
flake mainit. Andito lang sa habongga tsaka yung sa tubay. Yung kung habongga dahil sa kanyang ano, dahil sa kanyang karakteristik na sa low lying ano siya, location. So nagkakaroon ng perennial flooding. Uh, malaki talaga siyang maitutulong kasi ma mapo-forecast na kung sinong mga pamilya, ilang pamilya ba, ilang individual ang maapektuhan kapag merong baha. Lalo na yung flash flood area kasi meron din kami mga flash flood areas. Basically, malalaman na natin kasi meron siyang forecast in 6 hours hanggang saan level ba yung spilling level niya kung saan siya aabot yung level ng tubig. Doon namin siya din mapaplano, magagamit siya for planning. Si Engineer Michelle Vihapitana, the project leader of Phil LIDAR 2 project. Basically po, uh, Phil LIDAR 2 is a national resource mapping project. Phil LIDAR 1 kasi is uh, more focused on producing hazard maps. While si LIDAR 2 is nakatoon yung pansin niya sa paggawa ng resource inventory sa pamamagitan ng mapa. These resource maps is very valuable, especially pag gusto natin malaman kung alin sa mga yaman natin sa isang lugar ang posibleng nasa panganib. For example, for baha, sa baha or sa landslide. You know. yung first step sa pag-classify ay segmentation. So, makikita nyo dito uh, yung LiDAR image or yung LiDAR DSM or NDSM ay sinesegment para makapture yung different objects within that image. So, kumukha kami ng samples from different places na may LiDAR data and then, in-examine namin yung behavior ng, ng different classes. So, ano bang properties na meron sila? Paano ba natin nasasabi na ang coconut ay isang coconut? or yung mango ay isang mango. Uh, so, yun ay depende sa features nila na na-extract from LiDAR. Ultimately, yung product ng PhilLiDAR 2, Agricultural Resource Map. Hamon. Yung hamon kung paano namin ipapaintindi sa local government unit yung project. Kasi nga, makabagong teknolohiya siya. And then, kung paano namin i-discuss sa kanila na kailangan na nilang gamitin tong output ng project. Isa siyang makabuluhang proyekto that will not only benefit us, but also the community. After one year po of implementation ng, ng PhilIDAR 2, um, in, year, in year 2015, nabigyan na po namin ng mga resource maps ang um, Butuan City, ang um, Magallanes at saka Kabadbaran City. On December, may coastal resource map po kaming binigay for Buena Vista. Karamihan po is uh, farm map na po yung uh, agricultural resource maps na po yung binigay namin. Asa. cannot keep himself away from natural catastrophe. Lives can be turned upside down in an instant. Typhoons, floods, and earthquakes are just some of the many challenges that regularly beset a tropical country like ours. Typhoons like Sendong, Pablo, and Yolanda have left many of our countrymen devastated and our cities and communities destroyed. Due to climate change, natural calamities are now drastically stronger and the dangers more complex. For the most part, the general focus after surviving such calamities has always been about immediate rescue, relief, and rehabilitation. 
whether it's getting worse or better, the key to resilience and progress should not only be about your active survival. We must all take a proactive approach based on adequate preparedness, prevention, and mitigation. A top mitigating component for disaster management is to focus on early warning systems. The Department of Science and Technology, together with the Training Center for Applied Geodesy and Photogrammetry and the University of the Philippines, has pioneered a one-of-a-kind initiative towards developing early warning systems and hazard mapping. The PhilIDAR program is a scientific approach to disaster risk reduction. It is an expansion of the DREAM program, which has covered 18 major river basins in the Philippines. The PhilIDAR 1 program will cover an additional 257 river systems in the Philippines. Using 3D outputs, the PhilIDAR 1 program generates accurate and high-resolution flood models and flood hazard maps. This allows for an early warning system that is especially useful for the communities living alongside the country's flood-prone river systems. How does the Phil Lighter program work? The Phil Lighter program uses LiDAR technology. LiDAR stands for Light Detection and Ranging. The whole process begins with data acquisition using Pegasus, Aquarius, and Gemini sensors. These sensors gather point cloud data from planes high above the ground. And these data are given to the data processing component using various software. After which, the processed data are given to the flood modeling component to generate flood hazard models and maps. These flood models and flood hazard maps are used by hundreds of barangays, provinces, and municipalities across the Philippines. Flood hazard maps have 20 to 50 centimeter accuracy that can be used by communities to determine the height of flood waters in an area. We can map out the original terrain using the Digital Terrain Model or DTM, while the Digital Surface Model or DSM includes the built infrastructure over the original terrain. Orthophotographs are high resolution and high accuracy images of an area. These are used to identify the features of the landscape. Using these DTMs, DSMs, and orthophotographs, we can see the unseen, such as the hidden river systems that may cause flash floods and destruction of property. In the case of Marikina City, during the Habaga trains of August 2012, the program was able to notify the local government unit of an impending overflow of the Marikina River four hours in advance giving the community ample time to evacuate. This experience was echoed once again in 2012 in Cagayan de Oro City during Typhoon Pablo, wherein there were zero casualties despite extreme riverine flooding. In Compostela Valley, the program's technologies and data were used for post-disaster assessment. Using elevation maps, the program was able to identify that the community's previous evacuation center was situated in a high-risk zone. The program then recommended a more suitable and safer area. With the program's lighter coverage in the aftermath of Typhoon Yolanda, it was able to identify the exact areas affected and the number of infrastructure destroyed. This information were relayed to national government agencies involved in the relief and rehabilitation efforts. The partner state universities and colleges and higher education institutions are
Beyond its current application for disaster risk mitigation and hazard mapping under FeeLiDAR 1, the program's scope has expanded to the FeeLiDAR 2 program, which focuses on resource assessment and mapping. For the Coastal Resources Inventory, or Coast Map, using the LiDAR data, we can create a detailed inventory of high-value coastal resources, such as seagrass, corals, and mangroves, among many others. With this, we can improve our coastal resource management, coastal and environmental protection, and coastal development and planning. For the forest resource extraction, or Frexels, we can map out different forest features, such as tree count, canopy height, density biomass, and carbon stock. With this data, key agencies can enhance forest conservation and management. For the Philippine Agricultural Resources and Facilities Inventory, or PARMAP, we use the LiDAR data in the mapping of agricultural crops and facilities, as well as vulnerability assessment. Key agencies can then use this data to determine production areas for agriculture, crop management, and crop inventory. For the Philippine Hydrologic Datasets for Watersheds, or PhD, we can use the LiDAR data to develop a comprehensive database of hydrologic datasets from all inland water resources. For the Renewable Energy Resource Mapping, or REMAP, we use the LiDAR data to identify areas for potential biomass, hydro, solar, and wind energy development. In line with BOSD's vision for a smarter Philippines, the technologies pioneered by the FeeLiDAR 1 and FeeLiDAR 2 programs will be used to complement the efforts of various government agencies. For more information, visit dream.upd.edu.ph. DOS TV would like to thank Filipino Creazione de Mano Incorporated. Visit their showroom at Ground Floor Lobby, PSM BFI Building, 318 Santon Mode, West Crame, San Juan City. CITAV, the world's leading source of reliable and authoritative news, views, and analysis on information about science and technology for global development. Visit their website at www.citav.net. And that's it for today. For more information, just log on to www.dostv.ph and visit our social media accounts. Abangan din ang updates sa lagay ng panahon mula sa DOST Pag-asa tuwing alas 5 ng umaga at alas 5 ng hapon. Always remember, in progress, science is the key. Kaya sabay-sabay tayong makiisa at gamitin ang siyensya. Kami ang DOSTV, the program that delivers science for the people.